So in this video, what I want to discuss is the use of reduction formulae in integration by parts. So let's consider the following integral. x raised to the power n, and I'm assuming here, by the way, that n is an integer, multiplied by e to the minus 2x, and I can label this integral with the integer power n. And I'm going to call this i sub n. And what I want to do is to use integration by parts, we'll do this on the next slide, to show that this integral is related to some function plus another integral, i n minus 1, so that's exactly this integral, but n replaced by n minus 1. And these so-called reduction formulae can be used to reduce integrals with, say, a higher power to an integral with a lower power, and the aim is always to reduce it to something which you can calculate directly. So in this video, I'm also going to use this to calculate I3, in other words, to calculate the integral of x cubed times e to the minus 2x, and we're just going to keep on reducing this until we get to I0, and I0 is the integral of x to the 0, which is 1, times e to the minus 2x, and the integral of e to the minus 2x is something which we can standardly calculate. Having done this, what I want to do is to verify our result by using differentiation. So, on the next slide, we're going to obtain the reduction formulae. The slide afterwards, we will calculate I3. And on the final slide, we will verify our answer by differentiation. So, here is our formula, our definition of what I n is, and what we now want to do is to recall the integration by parts formula, that the integral of u times v prime with respect to a variable, in this case x, is u v minus the integral of u prime v with respect to x. So we look at our integrand, and it's easy to see that it splits into a product of two terms, one of which we want to identify with u, in other words we're going to differentiate it, and one of which we want to identify with v prime, in other words we're going to integrate it. And because we want to reduce this power here, x to the n to x to the n minus 1, etc., it's very natural to differentiate this. And another way of making this decision is to use the word late, and late tells us that logarithms, algebra, trig, exponential is the best way to decide which function you are going to differentiate. So if you have a logarithm in your integrand, you should choose that first. If you have an algebraic function, you should choose that first. A trigonometric function, choose that. And then last of all, you will be choosing an exponential function. And our integrand here is a product of an algebraic function and an exponential function, so it's very sensible to choose x to the n to be u. So u is x to the n, and that means that u prime, the derivative, is n x to the n minus 1. And if this is u, this must be v prime. So v prime is e to the minus 2x, and that means that v is its integral, so that is going to be minus 1 half e to the minus 2x. And let's just check that by differentiating it. If you differentiate this, you're going to pull down a factor of minus 2, which will cancel with that and you're going to be left with e to the minus 2x, which is what we started with. So that's correct. So now we just substitute this into the integration by parts formula, and what we obtain is that i n is going to be, so it's first of all u times v, u is here, v is here, so it's minus a half, just putting the numbers in front, x to the n, e to the minus 2x minus, because of the formula here, 
the integral of, and now it's u prime, which is n x to the n minus 1. v is minus a half, and I've got to put this in brackets because otherwise I'm writing that I'm subtracting, which I'm not. We're multiplying by minus a half e to the minus 2x with respect to x. So therefore, i n is minus a half x to the n e to the minus 2x. And now we have a minus sign here and a minus sign here, so that's going to give us plus. We have a half, and we also have another constant n. n is this integer which is labeling this. So we have plus n over 2, just taking those outside. And then all the x dependence is left inside. This is x to the n minus 1, e to the minus 2x with respect to x. And at this stage, when we look at this, we see that this is exactly of the form of our initial integral, but with n here replaced down here by n minus 1. So that means that this term, this integral here, is i sub n minus 1. So, in other words, we have obtained our reduction formula. I n is minus a half x to the n e to the minus 2x plus n over 2 i sub n minus 1. And that is our reduction formula that we were asked to prove. So, the key step here was to look at our integrand, to realize we could use integration by parts, and we could use late, or we could just use a bit of common sense and realize that if we were to choose this factor to integrate, we'll keep increasing the power of n, which is not going to help us. We need to differentiate this power here, or this structure here. So we've obtained our reduction formula. On the next slide, let's use it to calculate I3. So. For the integral, defined in this way, i n is the integral of x to the n times e to the minus 2x with respect to x. We shall, we've seen on the last slide that i n can be written as this function plus n over 2 times the integral i n minus 1, which is exactly the same as this integral, but with n replaced by an integer n minus 1. And we now want to use this to calculate i3. So we could just calculate i3 brutally by repeatedly using integration by parts and that's essentially what we're doing using the reduction formula but the reduction formula has I think got two advantages one is that it's something that one can use in an automated process perhaps on a computer and the other thing that has an advantage for it is that I think we are less likely to make minus sign errors and factors of two errors if we use such a formula rather than repeatedly calculating using integration by parts. So let's try to calculate I3. So from our reduction formula, I3 is going to be minus a half. Now n is 3, so in our reduction formula n is 3, so this is x cubed, times e to the minus 2x plus and now n is 3 in the reduction formula, divided by 2, times i of, and now it is 3 minus 1, so it is i2. And now what we want to do is to use the reduction formula again to express this. So we're using exactly the same equation, but now we have n is equal to 2. So here there's a 2, here there's a 2, here there's a 2, 2 minus 1. So what we get is that i3 is minus a half x cubed e to the minus 2x, that's what we've previously calculated, plus 3 halves. Now the 3 halves is going to multiply all of i2, so let's open big brackets, and i2 can be written, as we just said, in this way, with n is 2, so it is minus a half x squared e to the minus 2x plus n is 2, 2 over 2, which is going to cancel and give us 1, times i of 2 minus 1, so that's i1. So the 2 over 2 
is just going to cancel, and that will give us a factor of 1. So what we should do now is carry on, but tidy up and expand the brackets as we go. So what we have is minus a half x cubed e to the minus 2x and now we have 3 halves times minus a half so that is minus 3 quarters x squared e to the minus 2x and then from the next term we have 3 halves times 1 times i1 so it's 3 halves times i1 with a plus sign so that's plus 3 halves and now we can write i1 in this form using the reduction formula again so the three halves is going to multiply everything I'll open big brackets and I1 is minus a half x to the, and now n is 1 so that's x to the 1 which is x times e to the minus 2x plus and n is 1 so it's 1 over 2 times I1 one minus 1 that's I0 so let's expand and tidy up a little bit. So we have minus a half x cubed e to the minus 2x minus 3 quarters x squared e to the minus 2x minus 3 quarters x e to the minus 2x. And now the 3 halves multiplies the half, so we get plus 3 quarters I naught. Now I naught is our integral x to the naught, n is naught, times e to the minus 2x with respect to x. So it's the integral of e to the minus 2x with respect to x. So that is going to be minus a half e to the minus 2x. And we can check that. If we differentiate this, we'll bring a factor of minus 2 down that will cancel with a minus a half, and we'll just be left with e to the minus 2x, which is what we wanted. So therefore, we see that i3 is minus a half x cubed e to the minus 2x minus 3 quarters x squared e to the minus 2x minus 3 quarters x e to the minus 2x and for the final term we have 3 quarters times minus a half so that's going to be minus 3 eighths e to the minus 2x and let's add on an integration constant so that is our final result however we could write this differently so if we look at our result here, we see that there is a common factor of minus 2x, and there is also a common factor of a minus sign. So we could write as well, i3, our integral, is minus e to the minus 2x, brackets, a half x cubed, plus 3 quarters x squared plus 3 quarters x plus 3 eighths and then there is again an integration constant. So that's a different completely equivalent way of writing the same result. So the key step here has been to use the reduction formula repeatedly and in doing that and expanding as we go to make sure that we have to do small steps of algebra rather than one big step and that also helps us. So on the final slide what I want to do is I want to check that this is correct and the way I'm going to check that it's correct is by differentiating it. Now we've written it in a choice of two ways and what we will see is I think it's clear that differentiating this is going to be slightly easier than differentiating this but it is perhaps a matter of taste. I'm going to differentiate this one on the next slide. So what we want to do on this final slide is to check our result for i3 using differentiation. In other words we want to see that if we differentiate this it returns our initial integrand. So to do this we're going to use the product rule this is this multiplying by this 
so we use the product rule and we are going to get that the derivative of i3 with respect to x is going to be so let's first differentiate this factor here we're going to pull down a factor of minus 2 so we have minus minus is plus plus 2 e to the minus 2x open brackets 1 half x cubed plus 3 quarters x squared plus 3 quarters x plus 3 eighths and the next term that we're going to have is when we have minus e to the minus 2x and then we're going to differentiate inside this bracket so we pull 3 down here and we get 3 halves x squared from the next term we pull down a 2 and we get plus 3 halves x for the next term we just have the derivative of 3 quarters x and that's 3 quarters and finally the derivative of 3 eighths is 0 so that's our result and of course differentiating the integration constant also gives 0 so now let's look at this we can take the factor of 2 into here and everything's going to be multiplied by e to the minus 2x so we're going to have e to the minus 2x open a big bracket and then from the top row here we have 2 times a half is going to be 1 times x cubed so that's x cubed here we're going to bring in the 2 times the 3 quarters that's 3 halves times x squared with a plus sign plus 3 halves x squared similarly for the next term it's plus 3 halves x and for the final term it's plus 3 quarters we've still got to add to that these terms here e to the minus 2x is a common factor but there's a minus sign here which is going to multiply all of these terms so bringing that in we have minus 3 halves x squared so that's the minus sign times this minus 3 halves x that's the minus sign times this and then finally minus 3 quarters and I can close my big brackets and I've deliberately written these terms underneath the terms with the equivalent powers so what we see is that the 3 halves x squared and the minus 3 halves x squared cancel we see as well that the 3 halves x and the minus 3 halves x cancel and we see finally that the 3 quarters and the minus 3 quarters also cancel so we are left with e to the minus 2x times x cubed so this is the derivative of our result for the integral by 3 and this is indeed the integrand of the integral i3 which was the integral of x cubed e to the minus 2x with respect to x and that tells us that we have indeed integrated it correctly and that this is the correct result for the integral. And with that I will stop this video.